Hello and thanks for watching. Today I'm going to explain the layout. Here is a roll of red PLA. This is GTEC. Thank you, Tyler Johnson. He generously donated it to me. Here is the included holder for the PLA rolls. It's got bearings on all four of these corners. These parts are 3D printed. You assemble them as part of the kit. See, the roll sits in here and it provides a low friction surface so the reel can spool up the filament into that PTFE tube. The PTFE tube is a low friction Teflon tube and it feeds right here in the back of the machine. It feeds, this motor feeds this drive mechanism right here and that sends the filament up and around in this part of the PTFE tube, down into the hot end, technically the heat brake. There's the fan for the heat brake. That's the hot end down there. That's the extrusion nozzle. This is the heated build plate. It moves back and forth, forward and backwards like this. There's a gear motor that drives it on a, with a belt on steel rails. This is the Z-axis. There's a motor on top that drives a screw gear like this, and this lifts and lowers the print head. This is the cantilever or X axis. This is what moves the hot end back and forth, left and right. What you see here is that there's multiple different um, sensors. Well, there's a sensor that reads the position. It's called a Pinda Amrinda sensor, and it feeds information to the computer. That's the controller on the front, and that's the cable that connects the, the um, input. This is the USB key and it plugs into the back of the controller housing. Inside that black box is the brains or the microcontroller. The microcontroller coordinates the movement of all of the electric motors and fans. We're going to turn the unit on like this. We're going to go through a calibration setup so you can see how the system auto self bed levels and calibrates. This is the click wheel. It's the user interface. You press to activate. We're going to go down and select the calibration wizard and we're going to activate the wizard. I've already done this. We're just doing this to show how the printer works. There's an on-screen guide. You just follow the on-screen guide. It's going to go through some self-tests. So it's testing the fan, the part cooling fan. It's testing the heat break fan. The part cooling fan blows air. So as the hot plastic exits the head, it blows cool air to cool the plastic to solidify in the part. That side fan blows air through the heat brake so that the plastic doesn't melt while it's in the tube. You only want it melting near the extrusion nozzle. So far, all the self-testing is good. Um, what it's doing now is it's testing the range of the y-axis. That test takes a little longer because the screw is not as fast as the belt on the other axes. So once the Pinda sensor detects um, the position in absolute and Z, it retracts and goes to the top and that'll verify that that axis is working properly. This is in real time. There's no time lapse. You can see the, um, the movement towards the top uh, actually articulates the spool. Um, that light back there indicates that the bed is heating. So right now there's heat coming off of that plate. That heated build plate is so that the parts stick. If it was cold, the hot plastic would cool too much and then it wouldn't stick to the plate. So most FDM printing relies on a hot uh, bed. That cooling fan up there, that what I was doing with my fingers is to show that the side fan on the hot end is to cool the heat break. And the principle there is that you've got a hot end underneath the feed and you don't want the heat melting the, the feed filament before it gets to the head. So there's um, a metal cooling um, fin assembly in front of that fan that um, helps to radiate away. Now everything tested good. Now it's going to go through an absolute temperature measurement and it takes longer to heat the bed than the hot end. The, the bed has more um, area and mass, so there's more thermal volume. Everything checked out good, so now we're going to do the uh, calibration test. And what this will show is the initial calibration where you adjust the Z height. So the idea with FDM, 
is that you want the hot end to extrude the filament onto the build plate, just barely squishing it. You don't want it smearing it, and you don't want it to ooze out the end and drape across the hot end. You want a nice, I'm gonna pull this filament off there. You want a nice, solid, um, minor squish. And the Z adjustment is in, I think, thousandths of an inch. Um, every printer is slightly different, and so you have to custom calibrate the Z. It's called a live Z if you do it while it's printing. Um, I have mine adjusted out to like 0.85 or 88 or something. Um, I initially started out 0.87 or 787. Um, really, it, it, you want to do this test. What it's doing right now is it's called auto bed leveling. So that's a little piece of plastic that came out. While the head's hot, it actually leaks PLA uh, in this case. It's a low temperature filament, but it's going to go across 16 points and it feeds that data into the microcontroller for us. It's part of the self-test and calibration. That way the printer knows where the, the, the topography or the layout of the bed, because it's not 100% perfectly uniform, but the microcontroller can take into account deviations by measuring all of those points. And then what it's gonna do, that's the purge line. So it always prints a purge line. It's gonna do this zigzag test pattern and you're going to see me adjusting with the click wheel the, the Z setting. And what you're doing here is your first layer calibration strongly affects whether your print will stick or not. So this is absolutely important to pay attention to this stage because it will determine whether your future printing is successful or not. You want good bed adhesion during this step. Your first layer is the most important layer because it holds the part for every other layer. And these prints can take anywhere from 20 minutes to 25 hours. So you want good bed adhesion, otherwise your part can delaminate. Uh, and that would ruin the print and waste your material. Fortunately, PLA is biodegradable, uh, so you can throw it in your trash and it'll become natural gas in a, a trash dump. Or you can put it in your compost if you have commercial hot compost uh, and it'll become soil in the future. It's made of plant. Um, PLA is a polymer derived from uh, different biomass uh, starting like corn. Sorry, I couldn't hear what you said. At any rate, Siri sometimes uh, activates on my phone. That's just a coincidence. We can see the printer printing the little flag. Um, there's a small rectangular area at the end of this test print um, that it fills in a small box and that way you can t you can get a good idea of the um, the adjustment between the filament deposition as it's going line by line and whether they're bonding. So again, the goal is not to have them too smushed, but you want just a subtle squish to the filament. Looks like everything worked. So we're gonna accept that and then we're done. Everything's good. I'm gonna turn the unit off though because um, I'm not actually printing anything at the moment. There's the on off switch over here and you just toggle that and it's cold off now. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.